Our lesson today is on properties of linear functions, and our learning intentions include, first of all, to understand what makes a relation linear. So a relationship is how two things interact together, and what makes them linear or not, and also how to calculate um, from a graph or from a tail values whether or not it's linear. Second is to be able to calculate the rate of change, so how much something is changing as time goes on, maybe something's getting higher and higher and higher, the rate of change would be how much is getting higher in relation to time. And last, we're going to review how to graph using a table of values. Let us uh, first look at the definition of linear. So a relation is linear when a constant change in the independent variable gives a constant change in the dependent variable. So if we go back to the last lesson, we learned that the independent variable is on the x-axis. And we learned that the dependent variable is on the y-axis. Okay, so with independent, so again, here's our x-axis, dependent, our y-axis. A constant change in the independent variable means if it goes up the same amount each time, and this one it's going up, you can see I have a dot at 1, a dot at 2, dot at 3, dot at 4, then it will give a constant change in the dependent variable and it went from 20 to 30 to 40 to 50. So to check that, what you can do is you can see that it, the independent variable went 1, and then the dependent variable went up 10. Then the independent variable went 1, the dependent went 10. The independent went 1, the dependent went 10. Independent went 1, dependent goes 10. So are the constant changes in x giving constant changes in y? Well, let's check. The independents were 1, 1, 1, 1, so it's constant. Now, it's, de it's linear if the dependent is also constant. Up 10, up 10, up 10, up 10. It is. So, I can see this is a linear relation. Now, when it's in a graph, we actually don't even necessarily need to go through all this work. If it is a straight line, it is linear. Okay, so if my graph had been a curve, that would not be linear. Okay? So a straight line represents linearity. In a table of values form, well, let's look at my point. And we always go x, y first, or order, because it's alphabetical. So when x is 0, y was 20. When x was 1, y was 30, this point. When x is 2, y is 40. When x is 3, y is 50. And the last one, when x is 4, y is 60. So from a table of values, we're going to use this definition again. It is linear if a constant change in the independent variable, so independent is x, so is this constant? Let's see, it goes up 1, 1, 1, 1. So we do have a constant change in the independent variable. Now, if that also gives us a constant change in the dependent, then it is linear. It went up 10. 10, 10, 10. So this constant change in x gives a constant change in y, so it is linear. If for some reason we had a table of values that went like this, let's say x and y, and we went 10, 15, 20, 25, so you can see it's going up 5, 5, 5, and then on the other side it might be... Um, 20, 25, 35, 50. So it went up 5, 10, 15. Well, we do have a constant change in the independent, but, well, we have a pattern here, but it is not constant. It went up 5, then 10, then 15. It needs to be the exact same each time. So this would be a nonlinear relation. So you need to be able to tell if something's linear from a graph, straight line is linear, or from a tail values, if it is constant on both sides, then it is linear. Now we're looking at rate of change. So the rate of change is exactly as it sounds. I'm not going to give you a definition. It's how fast something is changing. So when you're driving, if you're driving 80 kilometers per hour, that is the rate of change. It's how far you're going over time. Okay? So, the way rate of change works is this. It's the change in the dependent variable 
divide by the change in the independent variable. That's kind of fancy and you get lost in all the words. A better way to look at it is this is the triangle means delta, it's a Greek letter, it means change. So the change in y divide by the change in x. So how much is y changing x each time? Divide by how much x is changing. So let's look at doing this from a table of values and from a graph. And these aren't related to each other. Um, I just made them both up now. So what is the rate of change? How fast is it changing? So we need to look at the change in y divided by the change in x. So how much is y changing each time? Well, it changed 30, and it changed 30, and it changed 30. So the change in y is 30. Now, in our formula, rate of change is how much y is changing divided by how much x is changing. So the change in x is, it's going up 10, 20, 30. So it's going up 10 each time. So my rate of change, I don't have any units. Maybe it's uh, kilometers per hour and you're going really slow. You're going 30 kilometers every 10 hours. Um, so reduce the fraction. This would be 3 over 1 would be our rate of change. Now in graph form, what I have here is I have a graph, and let's say you let go of a balloon, it's full of a lot of helium, so it's going really fast, and we have time in seconds. Where is it at 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds? And it's height in meters. Okay, 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters is our units with little 50 dashes in between. So for this one, the rate of change. How much is y changing each time? So between each dot, y went up 50 from this dot to the last dot, okay, y went up 50. From this dot to this dot, y went up 50. So the change in y is 50 and height is in meters. And now what is my change in x? My change in x, well in x, okay, x is always horizontal, y is vertical, it's going up 5, 5 from one dot to the next, it's going up five each time. So five seconds. If I reduce my fraction, 50 and five gives me 10 meters per one second. So 10 meters per second is my rate of change. So this one's a very important one. You're gonna deal with rate of change quite a bit coming up. So you need to remember that how much something is changing is simply how much it's going up or down compared to how much time is going on. So it's the change in y divided by the change in x. And hopefully you can see this is going up 50 meters for every 5 seconds. It goes over 5 seconds and it goes up 50 meters. Over 5 seconds, up 50 meters. So make sure you please, please make sure you understand rate of change. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the two things we've done already together, checking if something's linear and finding its rate of change, along with how to do a graph if you're just given an equation. And what we're going to do is, I guess our questions here, graph the following using a table of values. So I have this equation, I'm going to try to graph it. I have this equation, I'm going to graph it. And then once I'm done, I'm going to check, is it linear or not, once I've graphed them. And also I'm going to check for, if it is linear, state the rate of change. Okay, so to graph, this is something you're going to become very familiar with in the next chapter, and you'll be able to graph this really quick and easy. Today we're going to use table of values. And this is something you're going to graph a lot of in grade 11. Today we're going to use a table of values though. So to graph using a table of values, the biggest question I always get is, where do you start? Where do these numbers come from? Because I'll always kind of start by doing something like this. Uh, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, so on. And someone will say, well, where do those numbers come from? Well, here's the thing about a graph. This graph is going to go forever. I could use the points 100, 101, 102, 103, but on my graph, if this is 1, 2, 3, 4, if I'm using the points 100, that's going to be way down there. Okay? We, basically, when you start with a table of values, always start with numbers around 0, because that's where your graph starts from. It either goes positive or negative. So I start with negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. On this one, I'm going to start with negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. This is typically what I'd start with for all. I kind of cheat on this one. I drop negative 2 because I know what's going to happen. And 
I just don't have a lot of space, so I kind of jammed this in and cheated just a little bit. So, in order to do a table of values, so again, these numbers, just pick numbers around zero. That's what you're going to start with. I pick some numbers around zero, that's what I'm going to start with. So on this first one, what we do if x is negative 1, what is y going to be? So I'm going to start by writing out my equation again down here. Now, if x is negative 1, put a negative 1 in for x. So x is negative 1, I put a negative 1 in the x's spot. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. So 3, then I have a plus 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. So, 5. Now I'm going to do that again for the next number. If x is 0. So I put a 0 in my x's spot. Now, Negative 3 times 0 is 0. I still have my plus 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. And now you can do this for each one if you need, or you can just start to do them in your head. So if x is 1, so I'm going to do this next one in my head. I'm going to show you how. If x is 1, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Now the next one. If x is 2. Put a 2 in for the x spot. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. And now I can graph this. So the way we graph is it always goes x then y. Notice I have my x axis, my y axis. So it looks like we need a couple more up here. Because when x is negative 1, when x is negative 1, my y height is 5. So I go negative 1. 5 is this point right here. That's the coordinate, negative 1, 5. Next coordinate is at 0, 2. So when x is 0, y is 2. I'm going to bring this in just so you can see it a little closer. When x is 1, y is negative 1. So when x is 1, I'm going positive on the x now, y is negative 1. So that is 1, negative 1. Notice it always goes alphabetical order. X, then Y. 1, then negative 1. Next, when X is 2, Y is negative 4. When X is 2, Y is negative 4. And now I've got a bunch of dots. Really, with a, a line, you only need two points. And I know this is a line just because it's Y to the power of 1 and X to the power of 1. So when I connect my dots... Oh, that's, sorry. That's, a, that's not very good. There. I have arrows on each end to show this is going to keep going because I could do when x is 3, what's y, when x is 4, what's y, when x is 5, what's y. And if I had drawn this with nice perfect graph paper, um, mine looks a little curled, but if it was drawn nice perfect graph paper where each notch was the same distance, this is, is it linear? Yes it is. This is a straight line, so it is linear. So you could say linear. Now, the next question was, if it is linear, state the rate of change. And rate of change, remembering to the last time we, last little clip, how much is y changing, how much is x changing? So in y, it is going down 3, down 3, down 3. So my change in y is down 3. And my change in x, because the rate of change is always how much y is changing divided by how much x is changing. My x is going over 1, over 1, over 1. So my rate of change is negative 3 over 1. Okay. So make sure you can see if it's linear, straight line. You could also tell it's linear here. It goes up 1, up 1, up 1. Down 3, down 3, down 3. So because it's constant on both sides, that's our definition of, lin of linear, then it is linear. And lastly, rate of change, how much it changes in y, how much it changes in x. In y, it's going down 3, down 3, down 3. So down 3. And x, let's go up 1, up 1, up 1. So my rate of change is negative 3.
Now let's look at another one here. So another table of values. This one I have y equals x squared plus 1. So let's put in our x values because that is how we use the table of values to graph something. So and remember, I, just, I didn't make these up, but you always choose numbers close to 0. So I've got my numbers that are close to 0. Negative 2. Negative 2 squared plus 1. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. Now let's try negative 1. Negative 1 squared plus 1. Well, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Now the rest we'll do in our head. If we put 0 in x up here, 0 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. Now put a 1 in. 1 times 1 is 1, plus 1 is 2. And the last one, 2. 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. When I graph these, same thing. x, y. So x is negative 2, y is 5. So at negative 2, 5 is right there. Negative 1, 2. Over 1, up 2. Next, 0, 1. So when x is 0, my y height is 1. When x is 0, my y height is 1. 1, 2. When x is 1, y is 2. And when x is 2, y is 5. And this graph, when we're dealing with squared letters, we get a u-shaped that's in grade 11 you'll learn is called a parabola. So now what we've done is we've graph this using a table of values. That was one of the things we had to work on today, is some review. Now, is it linear? Well, I can tell it's not linear because these are curved lines, so not linear. Okay? And you can see from here too, it goes up one, up one, up one, up one. So it's constant there, but is it constant on the other side? Down three, down one, up one, up three, not constant. It needs to be the same every time if it is going to have a linear relation. And so because there's no linear relation, there is no rate of change. So your assignment for today is page 308. Let's uh, just put this up here. Page 308. Questions 3 to 7. Sorry, 3 to 8. And question 14. Good luck. Stay classy, math class.